welcome Will. I, I, when, when I got invited to come and have a chat, I, uh, I thought, oh, great, I'll, I'll, I'll share Carnex Doors, some of the best things Carnex Doors done. And John and his team said, no, 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 that's not what we want. We want to hear your fuck ups. So um, I thought I'd. Um, I'm, basically, what I'm going to do today is uh, share with you, um, just give you a bit of an idea about, about what Carnex Doors, you know, what we're doing, what, what we are, where we've, got, where we've gone and stuff. But, but I want to really share some of our biggest stuff ups because I think that that'll help. Um, help you hopefully in your business journey. So, all right. So just a little bit about Car Next Door. So we are a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing platform. So basically, uh, we've got a whole bunch of people on our platform like Joy. Uh, Joy's got a 2006 Toyota Yaris. Uh, she uses it once or twice a week, but the rest of the time it just sits around doing nothing. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch of people, actually 50,000 people on the platform uh, like Jennifer. So her and her husband and two kids um, uh, they don't own a car, they don't want to own a car because they're stupid and expensive, uh, so they just um, uh, use, use Carnect or car on the platform when they need it. So we've got a, um, a technology that basically um, lets, lets uh, Joy share her car out when she's not using it with Jennifer. So um, this is just a, a quick shot to say where... Uh, picture to show where we fit into the market. So if Jennifer wants to use a car, given she doesn't own one, here are her current options. Um, she can use a car rental, but she's got to book it for a day. Um, it's quite expensive. She's got to sort of walk or catch a train, or catch a bus there or whatever to get to it. Um, she could use a, a go-get, which they own and operate fleets of cars on the street. Um, that's a lot more convenient. You book it on a platform and you swipe to get in and, and off you go. Uh, but they have to own and maintain a whole bunch of cars, so it's, it's still quite expensive. Um, you could use an Uber or a taxi, but you know, if you're going to go quite a distance, then it's really sort of expensive to do it uh, if you're going to go sort of 20 or 30 Ks. Um, and if you want to kind of multitask, sorry, multitask, you can't really do that because you can't, you know, you've got to get out of the Uber and back in, and then it's really, yeah, it just adds up. So car next door for, for, this, pri for this sort of trip, um, which is a 40 kilometre kind of round trip over a day, we come in at 43 bucks uh, for the same thing. And the reason we do that is because the owners um, of the car just have those cars sitting around doing nothing if they're not rented out. So uh, we're kind of a little, little, bit, little bit like Airbnb for, for cars, basically. Um, so what we do is, and I'll come back to this in one of my, one of my stuff ups, um, is we uh, put this lockbox uh, and GPS tracking device into, every, into uh, Joy's car on the platform. And then when Jennifer wants to book it, she goes on a, onto our site, searches for cars, finds one that's just around the corner from her, and, um, and we give her the code that gets into the lockbox that day, and then she drives, drops it back. Uh, we uh, charge Jennifer, we take a cut, and then we pay Joy. So that's our business model and how the whole thing works. So now moving on to uh, um, just sort of this, this little picture here is our, um, a graph showing our earnings, uh, sorry, our trips since we started. So um, we launched in January 2013 and we launched with like um, uh, about 30 cars and we just launched in Bondi. Um, so that was one of the good things that we did. We only launched in a really small scale and I'm really glad that we did that because our first major... Um, major stuff up was that we, we completely got the wrong technology going. So what we used initially was we used a, I don't know if any, has anyone, anyone used like a GoGet or another car sharing service before? Right. You'd know that if you use those, uh, you've got a swipe card, a smart card reader on the dashboard, you swipe card, you know, beep, beep, unlocks the doors, mobilises the car and uh, then you've just got the key there and you can, you can start it. That all seemed really good, but when, you, uh, when you've got a peer-to-peer a -peer platform like us, we're messing with people's cars, and every car is different, and so um, we quickly worked out that that was just a horrendous decision for us to do. So we, um, we, uh, we installed these first 30 cars, it cost us about 220 bucks to install each car, and then we'd put a car on, and then the person would go, oh, I'm moving to the Blue Mountains, next you know next month can you please take the car if we've got to get the auto electrician out 
you know, uninstall it again. Um, Auto Electrician happened to be quite a moody type of fellow as well. So you kind of, you got to, you got to work in with his emotional um, needs as, as all this is happening. Um, so the other thing that started happening was with these smart card readers uh, and, the, and the devices in there, it had a SIM card. But if the message didn't get through to the SIM card, then an owner would go to book their own car and couldn't unlock their own car. So if you can imagine you've got this weird new idea um, uh, where you're going to rent your car out to other people and all of a sudden you can't get into your car, that doesn't please people. So we, were, um, we had a whole bunch of issues that happened and so we, we thought, right, we're going to stop putting any more cars on but we're still getting about 200 bookings a month and that was enough for us to kind of learn about how to deal with customers. Uh, but we, we designed and, and relaunched our new system which is the lockbox system which I showed you. The thing with that is it takes um, about uh, 10 minutes for us to install and one of our guys can do it and if someone wants to come off you just pull it off, you pull the GPS out and, and that's it. So it's just a, a much simpler way of, of, of doing it. So that was kind of stuff up number one was going with the existing technology uh, uh, instead of sort of thinking about what we actually needed. Which moves, moves me on to uh, number two, um, which, so you can see here, about that same time, once we got these, um, that sort of got us to this point. Um, once we got the lockbox sorted out, we, we decided, uh, we raised 650 grand, because um, we now had, just with this sort of bit of traction here, we kind of proved that we could actually get something going. We knew that if we could expand it out, we're gonna, um, we're gonna be, we'll be able to get a real business going. We decided to launch in Melbourne, just because we wanted to see if we could go in another city. At that same time, we'd been using a third-party platform um, to run the technology on. So basically, we'd, we'd gone to a car-sharing platform and thought, can you do peer-to-peer car-sharing? And they said yes, and so we went on with them. We realised that this wasn't going to work for us because we would say, for example, when we said, right, we want to switch to this lockbox thing, it took them eight months to get their shit together to to switch over to this new system. And we were like, geez, we, just, we need to iterate much faster than that. So we started building our own platform here and uh, it took us about a year and a half to do it, but we, we got off, off our own platform here. Um, so look, it's a bit of a mixed, mixed one, this one. I don't wanna say always build your own platform, um, but for us, it turned out that that was that was what we had to do. Um, starting with a third-party platform, I think was actually the right decision to do because it meant we got off the ground really cheaply um, and we could just get up and going. And if Car Next Door hadn't have worked, then it would have been good because we wouldn't have spent all this time and effort building our own platform. But then once it, once it did start working, we, we realised that the, the platform wasn't, wasn't very useful and we needed to switch. Um, so you can see there, we, we then sort of went on, uh, so this is when Steve came on, we did a $1.6 million raise and um, we saved the last 300,000 for Shark Tank, which was interesting because um, it, if you've already raised 1.3 uh, from good, good investors, it makes the negotiation quite good on Shark Tank. They can't do their usual, you know, chop your price in, in, in third. Um, and then just after, as that round was um, finishing up, Caltex um, have decided that, you know, petrol's probably not the fuel of the future. Um, and so they're trying to work out where, where they fit in into this new transport world. And so they've, they've invested 2.7 million bucks into us as well at that point. So just a quick, uh, quick show you where we are. We've, um, we've got around about 600 cars in Sydney now uh, and about 550 in Melbourne. Um, and I need to update this because... Uh, a few months ago, we only had a few cars in Brisbane. We've now got uh, 75 cars in Brisbane. So um, what's been interesting in Brisbane is uh, you guys don't take as many trips, but, but every trip you do take is quite, is quite long. So Brisbane owners are already making as much as uh, Sydney and Melbourne owners, which is, which is really encouraging for us because we're wondering if we, could get it, uh, if we could get it all happening here in Brisbane. So look, I've just got a few um, little bonus, uh, bonus, bonus fuck-ups for you. Um, the first one, I, I find this quite humorous because it just makes me look like an absolute tool. Uh, I, I needed to, when, when I, my first business was a mortgage broking business um, 
And when I set it up, I thought, right, I'm just going to uh, go to some website and, and get myself a company set up. And I think I did it, was able to do it for 150 bucks or something like that. Um, didn't get any advice about how I should set it up. And I set it up as a company and then got the business, got the mortgage breaking business going, ended up sort of building up to a team of 19, had a whole bunch of stuff happening, running quite a bit of money through it. And went to see my accountant and he was like, you know, mate, you should have set this up as a trust because if you sell it, then um, you'll, you, you'll be under this $5 million threshold thing and you'll only pay half the amount of tax compared to if it was a company. So I was like, well, that's annoying. So I went to all this effort to switch uh, the company to a trust, which is quite difficult. You had to do it over time and sort of gradually, basically spend a whole heap of money and time switching, switching the company over to a trust. Um, and even when I, did, when I did sell that business, I ended up paying more tax because, I, because, of, because of my initial um, uh, lack of getting advice to set it up. So then when I started Car Next Door, I thought, right, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Spoke to my accountant. Uh, and, and we decided I'm going to set this one up as a trust. And so set Carnac's door up as a trust, um, all good, went to get the R&D tax um, uh, organised. Uh, you can get, if you're, if you're, a, if you're you know, doing a lot of R&D, then you can get about 45% back from the government um, each year and find out that um, you can't get R&D tax incentive if you're a trust, only if you're a company. So... Then weren't great. Need to switch that company, uh, the trust, into a into a company. So my first company I set up, first business I set up as a company, it should have been a trust. Second one I set up as a trust, should have been a company. Um, so you know, I guess the the little moral for that is, um, you know, get really good advice when you're setting it up. It doesn't seem like it matters. Like you kind of think, oh, it's just one of those quick decisions I'll make it, but you, it's worthwhile getting that one set up. And. The, uh, the final one that, or the, the main, the final one that I wanted to talk to you about is when we first set up the platform, we, um, we, we started, we, everyone who was on it was just a good, good person, no issues with any dodgy borrowers or anything. And then as we started to get bigger and got more better known, um, we started getting a few sort of unsavory elements on the platform. Um, now, these weren't people, they weren't sort of, you know, stealing cars or anything like that, but these are people, you know, um, you basically, they take a trip and eventually drop the car back, probably late because they're pretty irresponsible. And then, um, and then we'd go to charge them and we just couldn't get any money off them because their credit card had no money on it. Um, and so what took us a while to work out was that if we charged a pre-auth, um, so it's just like if we took a few hundred bucks or held a few hundred bucks off their card or just checked that their card had a few hundred bucks off it on it, then... Basically, the moment we started doing that, those issues dropped from like, you know, we're having sort of 10 issues a week, uh, a month like this down to absolutely nothing. So um, it's one of those things that, you know, intuitively we should have really thought through um, a lot earlier, but we're a bit, a bit slow on it. So look, the moral of, um, of all of this is I've kind of presented some of these things as stuff ups, but... Um, we, we, we want to be making a lot more of them um, because if we hadn't have got the business going at the, at the start, we would have never have known that the smart card reader wasn't going to work. Um, and if we, if we hadn't have sort of... You've, you've basically just got to get out there and take those steps and make those stuff ups in order to realise what the next step is. Like, often, I don't think human brains are good enough to be able to foresee every possible outcome that might have... Might have might occur. So what you've got to do is you've just got to um, have a good think about it, take the, take, the, take the first big step that you can to get out there and get into the market and get interacting with people. And then from there, you'll realise where you've stuffed up and then you can start sort of making changes and get to the next place and you realise you've stuffed up again. So we've got plenty more stuff ups ahead of us, uh, and we'll, but we'll keep on stretching ourselves so we get the opportunity to make those stuff ups. So look, um, 22 seconds on the clock. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll finish up there. Thanks very much, guys.